Benchmarks for a 16 gigabyte RTX 3070 were just posted online and your GPU could get up to two times faster. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So an article was just posted over on videocards.com discussing how a Russian modder who goes by the name of Vic just replaced the VRAM on an RTX 3070. Now he was able to replace uh, the 8 gigabit modules with 16 gigabit modules. So with a little bit of tinkering, he was able to get 16 gigabytes of VRAM to work on the RTX 3070. So yeah, we're not talking about an official 16 gigabyte RTX 3070 straight from Nvidia. However, there have been rumors of that going around for some time. And so in a little bit here, we are going to discuss uh, the possible specs of a 3070 Ti or a 3070 Super Refresh. So yeah, stick around for that. But in any case, uh, going a little bit more into detail with this, yeah, he was able to get it working, but it did take a little bit of tinkering. Uh, he had to basically trick the driver into believing that it was a 16 gigabyte card as it's really difficult to modify the driver itself. So he was actually able to get that working. And with a little bit more tinkering, he was able to get it to actually stabilize and give some pretty decent results. So uh, when it's all said and done here, if we take a look at the benchmarks that he posted, we can see that in 3D Mark Time Spy, he was able to get 13,783 points. And then in the uh, Unigen Superposition 8K Optimized Test, he was able to get 4,914 points. Now, that is actually some pretty impressive results. And apparently, that is a little bit higher than your typical RTX 3070 Founders Edition. However, I do believe we are looking at an AIB model here. So it could just be that the clock speeds are a little bit higher. But it could also be that having the additional VRAM was actually able to increase those scores just by a little bit. So yeah, either way, it looks like this is some pretty interesting news here and it looks like 16 gigabytes would work actually with relative ease on an RTX 3070. I mean, if Nvidia does actually do uh, some changes to their driver and they do allow for a 16 gigabyte variant to come out, then yeah, it looks like it really wouldn't take too much work uh, on their part, at least just to put the same GDDR6 modules on there. However, I do want to talk a little bit more in detail about a potential RTX 3070 Ti or 3070 Super, like I mentioned just a little bit ago. So first taking a look at a potential 3070 Ti, here's what the specs would likely be according to uh, various leaks from uh, Copite 7 Kimi, as well as a little bit of guesswork on my part. So it looks like there's going to be 7,244 CUDA cores on this model. At least that's what was leaked by Copite 7 Kimi. It will likely have 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory uh, running on a 320 bit bus at 16 gigabits per second, which of course would give it 640 gigabytes per second. And you know, this card would slot just a little bit below the RTX 3080 and it would be, I, I would say significantly faster than the RTX 3070. But of course with only 10 gigabytes of VRAM. It's kind of more of a RTX 3080 replacer. And yeah, I, I think a lot of people would be a little bit disappointed by just 10 gigabytes of VRAM, even though that realistically is enough for most games these days. And in fact, I think all games these days and going forward into the future, 10 gigabytes should get you by for a little while here. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be cutting it close here pretty soon. So um, the other option that they have, if they don't produce this one on the GA102 die, is they could produce the GA103 die, which has been rumored for some time. And now this GPU would likely also have have roughly 7,244 CUDA cores, uh, except for this time it would likely have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X uh, running at 20 gigabits per second on a 256 bit bus. And if you do the math there, you know, funny enough, it comes to the exact same 640 gigabytes per second, which of course is important because with 7,244 shaders, that is roughly about 20% fewer than say the RTX 3080. And that would be about 20% less uh, memory bandwidth as well. So all that really lines up. So, you know, in my opinion, it really could go either way. They could get 640 gigabytes per second, uh, whichever way they go, giving them roughly the same amount of performance. The only thing is, you know, how much is it going to cost and how difficult is it going to be? So, you know, realistically, in terms of cost and, you know, ease to produce, I would expect that the 10 gigabyte model would be a little more likely to show up. However, again, it is definitely possible that they could create this GPU with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And I think that would be a lot more exciting. But again, you know, uh, getting GDDR6X validated at 20 gigabits per second is probably going to be a little bit more difficult and as well uh, it's going to be a little bit more expensive you know 16 gigabytes of g6x versus 10 gigabytes of g6 yeah it's going to cost a little bit more and if they're trying to get this thing in say between uh 600 to 650 dollars for the msrp uh yeah you can tell which one was going to be a little bit more likely however i do really hope that they do end up going with that 16 gigabyte variant as that would be a very interesting card and definitely would hold up very well as the years go on but now let's talk about how your gpu could potentially get up to two times faster
Masters. So over on YouTube, the YouTuber Red Gaming Tech just had an exclusive leak on what many people call AMD's DLSS or what is actually called Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Yeah, that's quite a mouthful. So uh, from here on out, I'll be referring to it as either Super Resolution or DLSS. So it looks like according to Red Gaming Tech, one of his sources says that Super Resolution could give AMD RDNA 2 GPUs up to two times the amount of performance when it's working correctly. Now, of course, uh, depending on what application you're running or what's going on in the scene, this could definitely vary by a significant amount. However, that is definitely really good news to hear because I was a little bit worried that this super resolution uh, DLSS alternative would end up being a little bit worse than NVIDIA's. And, you know, realistically, it may uh, have slightly worse image quality or something like that. We don't have the full picture yet. But, you know, from what Red Gaming Tech is stating, it looks like this is going to be something really impressive. However, you know, as impressive as it sounds, there are a few downsides to this. So, you know, it looks like, at least according to him, uh, it's only an alpha right now. So it's a little bit of a ways off. And then on top of that, it's not a global toggle. So, yeah, that's a little unfortunate to hear because I've been saying for a little while here that, you know, whoever gets this working as a global toggle, say like in the NVIDIA control panel or uh, AMD's control panel, that GPU manufacturer is basically going to be the one who wins because essentially every single image that comes onto your screen is going to be immediately uh, thrown through DLSS or super resolution, allowing you to get much better performance in every single application you get. And it's not going to take really a whole lot extra work from anyone as well. So it's unfortunate to see that that looks like uh, AMD is not going to be able to achieve that at this point. And then on top of that, it looks like this is going to be have to be implemented either on a per game basis or on a per engine basis. Now, if they can get it working just in engines as a whole, that makes it very easy to implement into games. However, if it does end up having to be a per game basis, then yeah, a lot less people are going to adopt this technology and that's going to be a little bit unfortunate. But either way, getting up to two times more performance out of your GPU pretty soon sounds like a really good deal to me. So yeah, sign me up in AMD. Please get this out as fast as you can because, you know, the more games that NVIDIA gets this implemented in, uh, the further and further behind some of your GPUs can fall because, you know, if you take a look at NVIDIA's DLSS 2.0, uh, the way that it upscales things from, say, like 1080p to 4K, uh, there's really not a whole lot of difference between DLSS 4K and regular native 4K. Now, there are sometimes some little artifacts that you see that don't look natural, but, you know, as a whole, they look very, very similar. And in some cases, I actually prefer DLSS 4K over native 4K with no anti-aliasing or 4K with, um, say, temporal anti-aliasing as TAA can sometimes make it look like you take a whole bunch of, say, Vaseline and just squ uh, put it all over your monitor. And yeah, that can look really bad. So in some cases, yeah, DLSS 4K can look even better, at least in my opinion. And I just can't wait until AMD also gets their implementation of this out because it is absolutely desperately needed. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the 3070 Ti or 3070 Super is going to have 10 gigabytes of VRAM? Or do you think that it's going to have 16 gigabytes of VRAM? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.